I enjoy the diversity of human beings. Everyone has their own traits, whims and characteristics and getting to know someone new is exciting because it opens new avenues for such discoveries. Growing up, were you intrigued in happenings around you like me? Most of the Indians who are now in our 30s and 40s usually were. This was before the advent of internet when landline phones and television seemed utmost luxury. That might be the reason why we still get lured towards 70s 80s music and movies so much. And what about vintage short stories? Don't we love to read them? These days, though most of us travel in public transport, we aren't interested in things around us. Moreover, we hardly notice the person who occupies the seat next to us. So, for a change, why don't you get ready to board the train that contains 12 bogies of stories, meet some idiosyncratic protagonist and overhear the conversations for a while? Hello everyone. Welcome back to books.com lit kyan with me Subhashni. In the translation series again, today we have Vasant Purushottam Kali's Karmachari. Originally written in Marathi in the year 1973, this book is translated into English. by Vikrant Pandey who brings this vibrant universe to new generation of readers aha uh-huh. let me warn you this train takes you back to a far simpler suburban marathi milieu a little bit slower times in mumbai to understand a writer's work better we need to know where he comes from what kind of life he lived the conditions he faced and what pushed or inspired him to write Vasant Purushottam Kali or Vapu as he was popularly known was born in 1932 in Maharashtra. He was one of the most prolific writers in Marathi with more than 60 books to his credit. He wrote short stories, novels and biographical sketches. He also started the trend of katha kathan where he would read his stories out to live audiences and his stage shows, audio cassettes and CDs were immensely popular. Of all his work, his short stories are known for their insightful character studies, gentle satire, and observations on life. Kali was a keen observer of people and by that I don't mean human nature, but simply of the ways in which people behave, their eccentricities and idiosyncrasies, also their mannerisms, speech, and tendency towards goodwill or grudge. he conveys very effectively the mysterious nature of human mind and the unexpected things one sometimes ends up doing as the name suggests all the characters in this book work in a bureaucratic setup it's a snapshot from the lives of countless office workers that make up india's main service sector workforce primarily in government jobs They work in dingy offices on creaky desks stacked with old files. Each file taking a momentary break on their parikrama across the office as they get transferred from one desk to another and from one karmachari to another. These middle class salaried mumbaikers struggle to meet their ends. Travel every day hours together on local train, tired to their bones at office and go back home standing at footboard of the city bus. However, this does not mean that these stories are restricted to a particular group alone. Though set in suburban Mumbai of the 1970s, they have relevance everywhere in India. We might meet these characters in our real life while commuting in local trains, in one's office or in one's neighborhood. They come alive under Vapu's sharp but compassionate gaze and prod us gently towards a world of greater kindness and understanding. His ability to get under the skin of an individual is what makes these stories enjoyable. He is one of the very few writers who perfectly matches the wavelength of the milieu they write about. He accompanies his characters as they breathe the dust and traffic air, drink the sweet and sour pani puri water, jostle for space during the entire 75 minute long commute on the always packed Churchgate Borivali local. deal with the overtime work from their boss and gossip from the office pune all while drinking countless cups of cutting chai throughout the day besides relishing the flavors of nostalgia that come my way 
I even more enjoy the hustle bustle in the local train. Clacking sounds of typewriter in the office. Flippings of rusty folders, whispers of gossip, friendships between commuters and colleagues. Most of the stories are told to us by a narrator observing his friend, neighbor, colleague, supervisor or subordinate very closely and keenly. Furthermore, each story is in the first person. The narrator is speaking directly to the reader. He also builds up the story through conversation. So yes, you can forget about long drawn descriptions. Wapu introduces you to a host of characters who will surprise you and these include a portly man, Vaidya, with an overbearing wife who at the end turns out surprisingly intelligent and mature. A rich upper class fellow in Anamik travels by local train to help people in his unique style by telling blatant lies. According to this eavesdropper, a man in trouble is not looking for a solution to his problems. He is looking for someone worse off. The realization that his situation could have been much worse makes him feel happy. We get a strange kind of satisfaction when we see others suffer more than us. Don't you agree with him? Then comes the middle class contractor's feelings of fear and guilt on taking his first bribe. His emotional turmoil at the beginning and restlessness at seeing a policeman is beautifully portrayed. If there's a story of a paranoid father of a son, there is also a story of a broad-minded father of a daughter, a middle-aged man feeling attracted to a past lover and a married couple trying to understand each other. We also get to know a lusty supervisor and a responsible pune, a courageous, dishonest employee and a coward, genuine one. We also come across the feelings of a female employee who realizes the importance of family time to a lady who deliberately breaks her marital ties and many more memorable characters. All of them play their roles with their own unusual and strange quirks piquing our interest steadily. Their workplaces, their family and those surrounding them, their woes and their joys, the changing times and the facts and truths are so real that we accept them. You'll notice that the title of each chapter is the last name of the protagonist in the story. This underscores the importance of the character as central to the story rather than any plot or storyline keeping up with the surprise element on what's the story about. The author has given us perfect examples of show, not tell. Everything flows organically from the conversations and the events. To me, in fact, to any reader, all stories feel authentic and intimate. While the story may progress at a normal pace, the reader is aware of a tension accumulating or waiting to erupt. Each story has a stealthy philosophical element in and around, popping up with a lesson or a moral at the end. There is a philosopher in every man, no matter how common he is, as this one. People with whom we don't get along at all don't trouble us. Their praise doesn't fool us. Their taunts don't hurt. It's the ones who are close that make your life miserable. My favorites from the lot are Kalpana, Kambete, Satwalekar, Kharkanis and Diostali. Joshi, the advocate whose uncanny ability to respond to questions with questions made him a puzzle. Sadashiv was pretty funny. Vandana Saman tops the list for its unique way of narration and Vapu being the narrator himself in the story. He appears in the story as a writer character. It is here that he finally cements his belief as a writer being an observer of society and people. All the stories were readable and some were really good. The moral of some is suburban middle class truism. Some of them seem too matter-of-fact and poignant, but not necessarily dramatic. Still, I recommend reading them just for the sake of Wapu's writing style. While the stories in themselves are gripping, but it's Wapu's intricate little detailing of relationships and psyche that makes this a great read. Every story in this collection is about individuals who you and I know and recognize and have encountered growing up in middle-class urban India. 
At first, when I started reading it, the prose felt too simple and a little odd. But by the time I finished, it had evoked mirth, grief, wonder and a myriad of other emotions. They are simple people who despite being ordinary, compress into deep thought by their organic philosophy. One of the wise characters says, "Philosophy teaches nothing different. The whole idea is to drop the ego. Only then can you see the god." Another poignant aspect of the stories despite their philosophical bent is that Kali refuses to moralize. In that sense, he is sympathetic to the inner worlds of all his characters irrespective of whether they are perceived as positive or negative by general society. Vikrant Pandey translates them with the ease of an immortal. The translation is so seamless that unless someone points it out, the reader would not know that this is a translation. In his own words, I have retained some words from the original language. This gives it a local flavor. Yet it allows the story to be enjoyed by anyone from India or from any part of the world. But for me, occasionally he does tend to use English phrases which seem very out of place in an Indian context. For example, commuters in a local train are compared to packed like sardines. But it's also fun to untranslate and guess what the original verbiage might have been, especially in Hindi, Marathi, English, Bombay Creole. The language is simple and lucid, much like it was in the original. Humor that is intrinsic to language is something that is challenging and often lost in translation. Pandey has successfully translated a lot of the wry humor from the original text in Marathi to English. For instance, in the story Kambete mentions, the trains were running late. There was nothing surprising about that though. The surprise lay elsewhere. We never knew on what day it would happen. The book is mostly timeless, but readers come across its 80s setting whenever money is discussed, either explicitly in terms of the actual prices of cabs or theater tickets, etc., or implicitly when people discuss where they live because no one of this economic status can afford to live anywhere near Chembur, Dadar, or even Panvel today. You wait in a queue. be it the queue for milk or ration or tickets at a cinema hall or bus and yet never lose your patience you try to board a running local tolerate your boss snide remarks you drink the tasteless canteen tea and face many trials and tribulations of marital life you still manage to discuss politics with enthusiasm to finish a game of cards you tolerate everything you stand firmly against many hollow things in your life You tolerate the walkouts, the curfew, the hunger strike, everything. Still, you laugh and make others laugh. You are a true karmachari. The regular employee has experienced it all. Thus, karmachari perfectly captures time and space of ordinary people, their lives, their loves, their humble desires, and larger-than-life dreams. Their jina isi ka naam hai attitude towards everything that they come across in their life. Overall this book is highly recommended it will probably not blow you away with rhetorical fireworks and literary wizardry but it's a light and delightful read adult for when you just want to sit back and be amused by the antics of a man who desperately needs emergency contraceptive pills for his wife and wants his friend's car to go to the pharmacist that too without revealing why he is going there to sum up In no way this is a collection of short stories it's a mirror in which everybody peeps be it a peon or a head clerk be it the first day of someone's job or the last day of someone's career this book speaks to everybody and teaches people to share the good things with everyone and love all in the end we are all the proverbial arab in the story the camels may keep changing hope you liked my review If you are listening to this on Spotify or Apple, please do rate and review our show. This would help us a lot to reach more lovely people like you. And you know where to find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to share your comments. You can also write to me at books.com by Subhashni at gmail.com. Thank you for staying tuned till the end. See you in the next episode of books.com. Till then, sayonara.